So first of all, I have to thank Alan for this great overview and introduction into this topic, which saves me a lot of time <laughs> and I can just dig into the problems. And uh, before I, I, would, I, would, I will start, I would like to acknowledge um, my co-authors, in particular Holger Pohlmann and at MPI and Davide Zanketin, who is now at the University of Venice. So um, we have already some questions. I have here highlighted five of a lot. So what, one is, of course, what would happen if a large volcanic eruption occurs nowadays? Very obvious one. How will this impact seasonal and decadal prediction? Or let's phrase it in another way. How have the, the, large, the, the large volcanic eruptions in the last, over the last 40 years influenced our hindcast simulation, like this artificial skill? Um, another thing would be, do large volcanic eruption robustly affect simulated uh, climate variability on the decadal time scales and do backgrounds condition affect the decadal climate response to large volcanic eruptions? Um, and I would like to start with the first question very briefly. What would happen if a large volcanic eruption occurs nowadays? And at least two things would come up. So all modeling centers would start to race to use this event as a test case and of course to head for a nature or science paper. So <laughs> it's then the question when, when the volcano will be erupt either uh, during daytime in Europe or America and then we had a little bit <laughs> advance also for press releases. The other thing would be, um, so let's just emphasize that we all think or should be as Ellen phrased to get ready for the next volcanic eruption. <laughs> um, the next would be um, so that, um, yeah, of course, every decadal prediction that had been made without knowledge of this um, would have become obsolete, at least if it is a very large one or a pinatubo like. Here I show you some um, model results from our MECLIP uh, system for a pinatubo like eruption in 2013. And you can see, of course, you, we get a cooling. And as it is a pinatubo-like eruption, or we assumed a pinatubo optical depth, we got almost the same cooling, about 0.4 Kelvin. Where is this here? And also we got some decrease uh, in, in precip. But here we see it's starting to get, so we have an overlap between uh, the ensemble. So this, of course, the ensemble mean are different, but the signal is not quite clear. And, so the question is, how strong has the volcanic eruption been in order to um, redo our simulation? So these are things one can address a lot more uh, on this topic. But I'd like to, to come to, the, to my next question. So how will, um, this, uh, volcanic, how will this impact seasonal and decadal prediction? Or here, I would like it to look more into the past. How have this, the largest volcanic eruption um, influenced our hindcast simulation. And we did, uh, and our approach is that we repeat the uh, hindcast simulation um, from the last decades without volcanic aerosol. So what we do, what we did, all, so here first, um, is this, okay, here we see this uh, volcanic uh, forcing data set which we use. Uh, you see that, that we have three major ones, Gong, Al Shishan, and Pinatubo, but we have also some moderate ones during this time. And when we integrate it, where is now the pointer? It's gone. Um, okay. Ah, here. You see, this is the integrate. We have a little bit in the tropics and at high latitudes. This is over the 40 years, an integrated value. Quite small, but still some, yeah, some effect. And what we do now, um, what we did now is that we used um, this baseline, um, baseline one setup from our model system um, where we initialize the ocean with temperature and salinity anomalies and the atmosphere, we, we, we did a full field initialization. And we have 10 ensemble members for this case. And then we repeat the same and we uh, leave this uh, volcanic aerosol data set out and we, we, we do three ensemble styles for each, for each year. So over the 40 year, we actually did the whole range and around the um, uh, volcanoes, we did some more ensemble, but in our analysis, we only consider here the three ensemble member size. 
Of course, this is quite, we see a, an impact in global surface temperatures, what you would expect, and you all know this somehow. We see that up when the large volcano, when the aerosol optical depth uh, is increased due to volcanic aerosols, we got a cooling, and we could nicely follow um, on the global, for, for global surface temperature anomalies, um, the observation. This is the end. Um, and all, but we also see that the warming trend is, um, is the most important one. So, so that for the, uh, for the ensemble, oh God. So for the ensembles where we have no volcanic aerosol, we still get a high uh, skill about 0.86 even if you know if you didn't consider volcanoes over this um, over this range so but uh, the difference will be then more obvious when we go to uh, to uh, to to lead years two or two to five so for for a longer um, time uh, or a higher time lag and also when we look to the de detrended values and here ich bin echt zum unten here you can clearly see, this is for lead year one, this is for lead year two to five, that we got, an very, that we got a really strong decrease in the, um, in the anomaly correlation, in particular for lead year two to five, when we, when we don't consider volcanic aerosols. Now looking to the pattern. Here you see this is the uh, uh, anomaly correlation um, as a skill in, in terms of anomaly correlation for the surface air, air temperature for the um, mm, for the non-volcanic aerosol and we see of course uh, uh, it's, it's relatively red due to the uh, due to the warming trend so this is mostly the warming trend um, and um, but if you look to the uh, anomalies and here you see this for on the upper panels for lead year one and in the lower panels for lead year two to five and on the right side you see the anomalies between the normal hindcast stimulation and the hindcast stimulation uh, without volcanic aerosol you see well I am here you see that we got what we would ex what we expect red means that we got an improvement if we consider volcanic aerosol so we get uh, of course, an improved skill in, in the tropical Atlantic. We got some over Europe and over the Western Pacific, Indian. So this is quite nice. But we also get, um, we get the other way around, that we get in the, uh, uh, at the Eastern Pacific, uh, the, our skill decreases when we consider volcanic aerosol. So here, we, our model has some, as you can see here, our model has some problems with the Eastern Pacific and Volcanic aerosols even uh, enhance these problems or uh, yeah, make it not better but uh, worse. So this was quite, quite astonishing for us. And here, you, I just want to show you again is this thing when you dis, as this was the undetrended and, and the comparison to the, to the detrended values, you see uh, the, uh, in the effect of volcanic aerosols over the last 40 years. So the integrated average is, is, is of course, you see an, a significant improvement in skill. And now let's look to, uh, to the seasons. We have, um, we have heard already that volcanic aerosols have, uh, have, a, have an impact in particular northern hemisphere winter. And so um, we thought it might be good also to look to this multi-seasonal average and um, what you can see here is that we got really, we see over Northern Europe, Scandinavia, we see really it's a, a significant increase in skill when we in, um, include volcanic aerosols, um, which, is, which is quite nice. Okay. And now when we look over the, um, over Europe in particular for the, all the, the for over the, the whole time period, um, in the upper panels, you see the global average. In the lower ones, you see um, them for winter and summer. And you see what I find also quite interesting is that we got the, the largest improvement or the largest uh, differences, not one or two years after the eruption, but the improvement in skill is in particular after four to five years. There we see the largest improvement. That is, the ocean plays a significant role um, for in transporting the signal. 
now I'm come to the to, to my last part of the of my talk. So about the influence um, on 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 the Kettle climb step and related to background conditions and. Um, this study actually occurred by analysis of Davide looking into our millennium simulation and do a multi um, um, a composite of all the large volcanic eruptions looking into the effect on, on the AMOC. And what you can see here is that, that you see. Na, ich bin hier echt so unfähiges. Wo ist denn dieses Glöder? Ah, here. Here you see this is a pre eruption state. And these are the anomalies, and you see, you see a large spread. And here, this is in, in red. This is for the, um, for the 1258, for one of the largest eruptions during the last millennium. The blue one is for Tambora. So you see, we get a different response. And so we ask ourselves um, uh, about what, what, uh, what would be if, uh, what would be the response if, if we really do have a large thermal and constrain um, the forcing. And we did a Tambora study. And I, I have to apologize for the people in the back. It's probably you can't see it, what it's here. But um, just to give you, uh, we, we did actually three experiments. One would, it was the AF, the all forcings experiment, where we include not only volcanic forcing, but also we have the, uh, the greenhouse gas forcing, land use, and so on. And then we do, did two volcano studies. The red one is volcanic forcing only, but we include also the 1809 eruption, which was a, a couple of years before the Tambora. So 1809 before 1815, of course. And then and we did another study where we didn't into take into account the, uh, the 1809 eruption. And we did, uh, for all of this study, we, we performed 10 ensemble members. And you see below, this, uh, we try to, to span up um, the, fa the phase space due to, due to selection of background conditions. Here we see, so that we get really a large, large spread. Here see the Ninu Dry, uh, Ninu 3 SST over the North Atlantic SST. And here this is the AMOC over the subpolar gyre, so that we really consider a lot of combinations for our studies. Um, yeah. And here you see. The, uh, the, the results, so first of all, of course, the top of the atmosphere forcing. We see that, that of course, and this is quite so, we, we have the same volcanic forcing. Of course, in the, non, in the case where we didn't take into account the 1809, we don't see here a decrease. And then here, and also we didn't see, in the, of course, the cooling. And then we see here, this is a global mean uh, temperature anomaly, and we see that which, oh, so we have the same forcing. We see here something between, I'll say, point, uh, point 0.9 and something between 0.65. So we have really a large differences, which is also significant different, only because we have other background conditions. So this was one of the ideas to look further into it. And we also see this um, not only, of course, in the global surface temperature. We also see this in the AMOC response which is in the upper um, left panel and, uh, uh, and, and in the northern sea ice cover and also in the o ocean heat transport. And we find out that the background conditions really shape, or the initial background condition when a volcanic eruption occurs, really shape also the response, um, the volcanic response to, to, due to the eruption. So, so to sum up, Volcanic episodes lead to an enhanced prediction skill over the last 40 years, especially on longer prediction lead times. So we see it in, of course, global mean temperature, mainly in the tropics, but in of West Pacific Atlantic Indic, and over Europe, and there in particular in winter, and then four to five in after four to five years. Volcan in our model system, or the, at least the model system we used for this study, the, M the uh, MPI ESMLR, or meekly B1LR. <laughs> this leads to reduced prediction skill over the tropical Pacific. And um, then, but I have to say, and this was, uh, Holger said this to me, wrote to, this, to me this morning that I should really say this, <laughs> that the skill of the meekly system, of course, improved over the East Pacific, um, East Pacific when we go to a higher vertical resolution and if we do a full field in initialization of, um, of the ocean. And this you can see here. Here, this is the difference. Here, we see it, it's red, so it's improved between the MR, of the higher resolution, and 
the version we used. And here we see it's also read for between full field and anomaly. And concerning the background conditions, I hope I could show you that they, that we find out that they model the, the strength of the feedback, and um, that uh, so ensemble simulation can also they will use this or have used the same forcing can significantly different in magnitude and coherence of the post eruption decadal oceanic signal. Thank you very much. I guess I didn't understand. When you did your volcano versus no volcano, what initialization did you use for the ocean in the experiments? Um, we all, this is the same. So the initial state would have the effect of the volcanoes in it already. Yeah, yeah. It would, this is just the additional effect on the, uh, on the atmospheric forcing. So we, we, we don't consider, so we, we, we didn't consider the atmospheric forcing. So this is... Uh, um, Claudia, there's been some suggestion that we might consider a predictability experiment as part of the C. Uh -huh. um, and one of them might be, for instance, predictability experiment where you don't initialize your model, but you ask about the predictability of the system. I mean, there's been questions about how useful this predictability is, if you can learn something about the models and so forth in this context. But you seem to apply in your last <coughs> bullet there that we would all have to pick, I uh, mean that we, we couldn't just pick some random start date from our control run for this particular experiment, because we get all sorts of different answers depending on what that state was. Mm -hmm. And so that you don't, is there an obvious way of doing a predictability experiment? Uh, you know, multi-model coordinated that occurs to you? I think uh, it, it, it might be that one tries to use this, uh, the similar background condition as similar as possible. So that one say, um, let's, let's try to, uh, it's difficult, of course, if you set up on, on the control runs to find similar, but let's somehow try to, to narrow down the range. Uh, so that we're all in the same AMOC phase, ENSO phase, and whatever one can think of. So that try to a to little bit to, uh, to, to make it more comparable. Yeah, and, 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 and of course, in Warmit, which this is why this Tamboro experiment, we would like to have um, nine ensemble members um, for, 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 for uh, we requested nine ensemble members from each group for different uh, ocean states to really get a large spread. John, Eric. I thought the uh, reduced scale of the tropical Pacific was absolutely fascinating. I mean, that's a really important result. But I think it I suggest it somehow ties to the discussion we just had, this Nicola Mayer result, which would suggest that a freely running model would have been suppressed the cooling in the eastern tropical Pacific for about six months. And somehow maybe your initialization is breaking that, or it has to, I'm sure it's somehow linked to it. Yeah, yeah. so we, are, we also, we, we right now had absolutely no clue what, 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 what's happened there. Of course, the model has, also the original model has problems, so we have, I mean, at the, um, we see some, some negative skills um, westward of the Baja of California. This is a typical, I think they have a lot of global models problems, so far I understood. I'm not an oceanographer, but I'm, I've heard that this is difficult due to this specific geographical location. And so um, please uh, stop me if I talk rubbish here. <laughs> it's a field I'm not uh, confident. On. But um, yeah, I, I don't, yeah, we, 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 we we, we do something, I mean, uh, uh, maybe we, we, we also have problems when we, uh, with the warm, yeah, warm equipment, but yeah, right now I cannot say we, are, we, 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 we don't know right now, and we are happy if, if someone has a good suggestion. So, okay. uh, I wanted to say that with ECRF 2.3, we see exactly the same thing. So when we, uh, when we impose the, uh, the volcanic forcing, we, we see a decrease of, of, the, uh, mm -hmm. of, of the scale over mm -hmm. the equatorial Pacific. It pretty much the same way as, as you do. We are alone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so probably we, we should uh -huh. start looking together at, at yeah. those experiments. Yeah. The, uh, the, the question uh, is mainly about uh, the, the, second, the last point that you have here. 
So you have a version of your focus system with a full field initialization, another one with anomaly initialization. If the background conditions really play a role, you, you should be able to see a difference in the uh, impact of the volcanic aerosol in, the, in, in terms of scale in those those two approaches. Yeah, we probably this might be something, and then so that we maybe repeat at least a couple of, of, of years with the prototype experiments would could, might be an, uh, an idea or with Emma, which is always then a question of, of, of computing time. So this is also why we only have three ensemble. And I, I started, I make two, uh, ten, ten, I increase it to 10 around the Pina Tubo and around El Chichon in order to have possibilities to look to other things as well. But yeah, we, we, we should look, maybe we can, we can test it. it. But just to follow on Jerry's comment, so the, the oceanization is the same with and without, without the, the volcano. So yeah. how can you be how, how can you distinguish what's coming from the SST changing because it has seen the volcano 10, 15 years before than from the radiative changes that are directly coming from the atmosphere? The the two are gonna play a role in the differences you see. Yeah, yeah, of course. So we, we, we cannot really, we can only answer part of the, the question with our model set approach. This is clear. And I have to maybe um, phrase it a little bit different. Then. But it's, it's just that, uh, yeah, from the external forcing then. Yeah, but I, I, I don't know. So how far have you go back in order to don't see the... Well, we, see, the we see impacts on the THC 15 years after yeah, the... Yeah, yeah. And, and, and what you also see, is, man, this is also quite interesting. I mean, you see what I see, the delays in the, northern, in the, in the high northern hemisphere lat high latitudes. It's four to five years. And, uh, and you also get after 10 years and, uh, and a delayed winter warming pattern, which is different from that what we know of directly, so the short-term response. But we see some warming over... Uh, over the European continent 10 years later, and you see it also in proxy reconstructions. So there's also, there, is, there are some time scales, um, yeah, underneath, all brief. Well, that's probably the, the, the VOMIP proposal is probably a way of addressing those in the like, perfect model or non-force model studies. Yeah, yeah, but they're not perfect. <laughs> so in your uh, experiments looking at background conditions, you showed AMOC time series that showed an initial dip in AMOC strength, and I'm wondering if you have any insight what's causing the decreased strength initially. Um, you mean this one here? Yeah, first they go down, and then they increase in strength. I, uh, I'm, I'm not... I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm, this is now, and I'm not really an oceanographer, but uh, we, we, we see this always. So the strengthening comes a little bit later. Also in the multi, uh, so I'm actually, I have to think a little bit more about it. It's, it's too challenging for me now. <laughs> I, I the, the question that Jerry raised, you can actually look at what happens starting your volcano, no volcano comparison by initializing a year or two before the volcano and then putting the volcano in. Then you don't have the impact of the volcano in the initial conditions. And then you can see really what happens both in the ocean and the atmosphere as a result of the volcano. In other words, don't don't initialize the condition the, the ocean conditions at the same time that you have the volcano. No, no, I think I should, I should phrase it in this way. We have just figured out with this experiment how much the, uh, the uh, external aerosol radiative forcing um, has influenced the prediction skill over the last 40 years. This is actually the question we have, we have addressed with this study. When we, when we, when we look, at, we didn't specifically hear, or I didn't show you specifically here the, the differences uh, from with volcano, um, uh, the, the impact of the volcanic eruption. We also did some studies. Uh, of course, when you, we, we, we initialize the whole time series. So when we, when we look, uh, when we, when we do, when we let's say go into 1989, yeah, and and, and then compare 1989, um, the, 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 the 10 years. Um, with uh, volcanic forcing and without volcanic forcing, then you then you probably have no um, effect in the initialization there, because. Not, there's nothing wrong. I mean, it's a prediction problem. 
initial value problem, right? Yeah. That's the problem. So isn't it the protocol already like that? I mean, you initialize the ocean state with the prior knowledge, and then you essentially go forward, and I don't see the problem the initial value problem. Right? Yeah, but yeah, it, it, yeah, it depends what you what you then get out, yeah. or what you wrote down. So. Did you take out all the volcanoes completely? Co uh, completely, I, I make it across. Uh, did, we didn't. We, we didn't take into account the volcanic forcing data set. But what so about the hindcast that started after a volcano? Did you include the volcanic? Data? No. No, no, no. The whole, uh, so we, we have just no volcanic forcing. So yeah, but it's in the atmosphere too, yeah? Mm -hmm. For a year. Yeah, okay, but it was in the atmosphere, but it was still in the ocean. And then it's in the ocean. Yeah. So you're kind of missing some <coughs> predictions still that could have, that we could have had from volcanoes that had just gone off. We started our forecast, you know, just following them. I, I mean, we just leave out the forcing. Yeah, but it's been a two bits, it's gone off. We know it's gone off. We didn't include it in our forecast. Yeah. We went that forecast, so you're, you're missing that. Yeah, and that's why, it, yeah. So then you then you see that, of course, and this is really, you see, we, we, our skill is not so good. That's, 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 so we, we just, we just, yeah. we just uh, um, confirm our, our original hypothesis that, of course, you need uh, the volcanic forcing to get the skill, but, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you.